takes place in upstate New York in the mountain resort town of Lake George. The story is split into three different sections over the course of my life as I was a constant visitor to this resort town. So, some quick historical background about Lake George and the French and Indian War, 19, or from 1754 to 1763. Lake George was the site of an all-important English fort, William Henry, that uh, guarded this approach south from Canada against the French Royal Armies and their Indian allies. It was the site of a major battle in which the French armies lay siege and forced the surrender of the entire English garrison. The English were promised safe passage out of the fort, but the French Indian allies ambushed the thousands of soldiers with the families a short distance from the fort itself. The massacre was horrible, and this whole episode can be witnessed in the movie Last of the Mohicans. Which you have yet to watch with me, though I've asked many times. With Daniel Day-Lewis. Mm-hmm. I watch it all the time by myself. You have I've never... never watched it. I don't think we have. I'm just saying. Is it good? You sure we haven't watched that? You've never seen it. I would not suggest it if it was bad. No, I know. I'm just trying to think if we... Because we've watched a lot of ones that, like, we've never seen that? I thought we've seen that. You've never seen it. Okay. I've mentioned it a lot, and you've never seen it. You always come up with something else for us to watch. Like, let's watch Ghostbusters Right. <laughs> I'll watch it sometime. Uh-huh. It'll be a Christmas gift. I'll let the listeners know when you do. <laughs> okay. The fort was burned down by the French, but was reconstructed and excavated in the 20th century as a tourist site. Around the age of 10 years old, my family took a camping trip to the state campgrounds that uh, abuts the uh, battle site and reconstructed fort. A short walk through a wooded area takes you right out onto the battlefield with the fort looming over it. Growing up on stories of ghostly sightings concerning the fort, I walked out of our campsite around 10 p.m. and took the short trail to the battlefield. As I, as I approached, I could hear what sounded like methodical drumming. Coming out of the woods, the entire battlefield was covered in a thick fog rolling off Lake George. I could see the looming fort in the background as just a black mass. Suddenly, I saw what looked like a floating light several hundred feet away across the battlefield. At first, I thought it was a flashlight, but as it came closer, I could see the flame flickering in what I could only describe as a lantern. The fog seemed to envelop this lantern as to block whatever was holding it from view. When the lantern came within 50 feet, I heard a loud crack and burst of light appeared in either side of the lantern. I could smell smoke, and I ran as I realized this was a musket fire. I had seen a demonstration in the fort that afternoon. Flash forward about 15 years, and I'm now a U.S. history teacher attending a conference about the French and Indian War in Lake George. I was studying a brand new beautiful resort, staying at a brand new beautiful resort hotel that was built right next to the fort on the same hill overlooking the lake. While building the hotel, they unearthed an entire graveyard of remains in what would become the parking lot of the new resort. The place quickly had a reputation for the paranormal. On my second night after being in an all-day conference, me and some buddies got some liquid courage and decided to check out the fort at night. We first went to a ballroom and bar area with wide open views of the fort and lake at the front of the resort. We took seats in the middle of the huge empty hall and waited in silence. Off to the far end of the ballroom, you could hear what sounded like a kitchen or pantry door creak open. We looked in that direction to see dark masses swirling slowly as if orbiting one another. We ran right out the side door and onto a lighted path that led directly to the fort. The fort was surrounded by a dry moat and wooden palisades and the drawbridges closed shut. The only light was coming from what I assumed was an alarm system, like the soft glow of an exit sign. The soft glow of light light the background of the guard tower over the drawbridge ever so slightly. We sat down on the edge of the dry moat and just stared at the fort, talking about our experience in the ballroom. Just then I noticed shadow figures walking ever so smoothly, almost gliding back and forth across the guard tower. I can make out what appeared to me the shapes of tall army helmets and the outline of a musket held on the shoulder as these shadows kept switching positions. Then I saw the faint flickering glow of what lantern light, again, of my youth. It was hanging in the middle of the guard tower. Needless to say, my colleagues and I booked it out of there to our rooms. Fast forward five more years and I returned to the same resort hotel with a group of students on a field trip. 
Kids will be kids, and on the first night, they slip her out of their rooms, quickly caught on, and the next day was a several-mile hike to the top of a peak overlooking the lake. I figured this would tire them out and lead to a calm second evening. We checked the kids into their rooms and tapped the doors. We did a perimeter check outside and returned to our staff rooms, confident of a good night's sleep. All was going well until we heard loud screams and throughout the kids are up and to their old tricks. The screams were coming from one of the boys' rooms and I quickly saw the tape had not been tampered with. I entered to see four very frightened teenage boys just pointing. Both four drawer dressers had been trashed with some drawers being pulled out and closed all over the place. The boys told me they'd been sleeping when they heard loud stomping and shaking. I thought it was coming from the room next door, so they turned on the light, and they were horrified to see their room in that state. Next morning, the girls told the female staff that someone was trying to get in their rooms, and a bathroom door inside the room has closed shut. I smiled to myself on the bus ride back home because every kid was asleep. The hauntings had kept them up all night. I hope the hauntings taught them an important lesson not to mess with history, as it will always repeat itself. I like that story. I like that it's a history teacher who ended up in the midst of a paranormal event because he knew what was going on. I wish I had a class trip where something like that happened. Yeah. It'd be awesome. That would have been cool. Uh, interesting place to explore, it sounds like, mm-hmm. with lots of stuff going on around it. I wonder if they uh, if they embrace this or if it's kind of like, no, we don't talk about that. No, I bet there's a lot that they embrace with that history. With the ghost? I know the history, but with the ghosts is what I'm saying. I don't know. Some places are weird about that. Yeah. 